So Tuesday, 16th of April, 2024, in this evening's show, we go over the third successive 1-0 win for Poole. This time coming in already, relegated Carlisle United, which keeps Blackpool's faint hopes of making the playoffs burning ever so slightly. Uh, we'll also be staying on the live stream uh, for a bit longer this evening, just watching all the key League One results that affect Blackpool as they roll in. I'm John Sproul. This is Seaside's podcast match reaction show, Carl Alt Nil, Blackpool 1. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to the Seasounds podcast at Carlisle Reaction Show. Apologies on the live stream for our lateness in starting once again. It's our foppy haired senior member over there causing the issues not, again. Not Nick. me. Not Raggy. Raggy, <laughs> Raggy was on straight away. Bang. Can't um, see you, that bloody dog. It's still the, it's oh, still it's the wrong mic. Me, but it's still, still the wrong working. mic. Still the wrong mic, Tim. It's the bad quality one. You have a you have a fiddle with it. And then sort your mic out. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I can't I can't comment because I did it last time when um, I'm, I'm looking at it thinking what's wrong. It wasn't plugged in. So uh, hey, Fleetwood have worked, one up Tim. already, by the way. Who are Fleetwood? <laughs> one minute, one up. I've put a banner there. Tonight's key matches, latest scores. I didn't even think of putting Fleetwood on it, Maggie. No, no, I just say pop up. Uh, Who are they playing? Peterborough away. Tim's frozen now. That'll be a hell of a result if they uh, if they hang on to that. Mm. Who's that? So... He's Raggy in witness protection. It's because you're a bit dark, Raggy. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. stick a light yeah. on. I want to conceal my identity. <laughs> and Deportes Raggy looks like he's in witness relocation program. Is that different from witness protection? Yeah, same thing. Great minds think alike, Mr. H and Andy. Right, Tim, how are you doing? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Should we just cut the stream down? Should we just finish now? Just finish. A crack on, I've got to knock off in 19 minutes. <laughs> oh, I've given up on that, Mike. Hey, it's working. Hey, it's working. It's not, I've it's turned working. it off. It's working, Tim. Anyway, I've had a few gremlins again. <laughs> Comes from coming in from work five minutes before the show starts. Goal, oh, Barnsley. Man. Barnsley goal, 1-0. Oh. oh, fucking hell. Dear me. Well, we didn't want that. Just what we wanted. <laughs> so Barnsley are only one point. They only really need one point, don't they? To get. They've got to lose those. tonight, and then we've got to beat them, and then and get the... do better than them on Sat uh, week on Saturday or week on Sunday. So um, we need. Well, we need Nil, score, Nil, Nilfoy, Nilfoy tonight, yeah. and then us to beat them on Saturday. But I think we all know where this is going, don't we? Mm. It's an important game for Portsmouth, though, because they need it to win the league, don't they? It's it's not a given yeah. that they're winning long the way, league. Long way to go. Long way to go. Very, uh, yeah, very early goal. Um, very early goal at Carlisle, wasn't there? Tim, Nick, you went. We did, and I did the um, the Carlisle podcast and said to them, "Listen, don't expect us to be flying at you from the off." <laughs> And we score uh, after 22 seconds. <laughs> Proof if ever it were needed that I have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, uh, yeah, and I thought, wow, is this going to be a three or four niller? Um, you know, great start. And it was a throw-in, wasn't it? I think the Carl R guy flicked it onto Lavery, and he, and he flicked it through to Dembele, and still quite a bit of work to do, but Dembele being Dembele just sort of ran with the ball and and curled it majestically into the roof of the net and um cue pandemonium in in the away end we'd um we me and tim got the train there although i nearly didn't i got up very early loads of time thought i'll have a nice breakfast fail drop me in Paul and we'll get the train all of a sudden it was quarter past 10 and i was like shit it's in 10 minutes just made it to Paulton station as the train was pulling in 
Uh, so I managed to jump on that. Oh, the the trainer few... definitely pulled in before you came down those stairs. <laughs> <laughs> I've not moved that quick in a long time, I tell you. Um, yeah, and we had a good few beers in Carlisle before and met up with a few other Blackpool fans and, um, and a couple of Carlisle fans on the way, actually, who were um, really really decent people and a good chat to them so it was a it was a good start and then an even better start with um with Dembele's goal and you're thinking right is that is this it you know is this the statement that we need at this stage of the season and to to be fair we did control the first half um the conditions certainly played a part it was very much in our favor in that first half and I was just thinking we we probably need to get another couple of goals because in the second half even at 1-0, you never know. I mean, Carlisle were poor. You can kind of see why they are where they are. They didn't really create much. Um, we had the chance with, um, I think Lavery potentially got fouled for a penalty and also should have scored when it was squared to him at the edge of the box and he and he, uh, and he he skied it over. And I was a little bit worried that, you know, at some point, even a team that are poor, they're going to get a chance from somewhere. And in that second half... I knew it was going to be a struggle because the wind was that strong. I don't know if you saw it if, when you were watching it, but like keeper trying to k- take a, a goal kick, the ball's literally rolling as he's, tra- as he's trying to kick it. So I thought we really needed to try and put it to bed in that first half, and and we didn't. And then the second half uh, was um, a bit of a non-event, to say the least. So Raggy was just fingering then. Uh, let's get the banner back up. One one equalized. One one. Boom. One one. Yengi. Is a finger in a is a finger in a light fist. Yeah. <laughs> no fisting round here. That's actually on the show notes. Fisting the again. north get fisted. The south get fingered. <laughs> <laughs> God knows what happens to the west. <laughs> Raggy, as a as a man of influence in the north, uh, what's your take on the fisting and? Uh, I'm pretty sure I know what your answer is going to be, and uh, oh, it does beg the question: why, why is, why is nothing being done about it? I, well, because we're long before it happens, aren't we? <laughs> most <laughs> of the time. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, listen, people do what they want to do, don't they? There's what, <laughs> what can you do? What can you say? If they want to do it, they do it. Well, it's, it's not for me. It's no. not for me. Well, well listen, there's each to their own. There's definitely encouragement coming from that. B block, it seems to be more than anything else. I don't yeah, know what's but, going on. B, I know what's going on. B block, but you need to. If anyone's fooled, out, if 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 Critchley fools himself into thinking that's got the majority of fans behind him because he hears a little bit of that, then it's crazier than I think he is. Rag, you didn't go to Carlisle, I believe. Um, with me, I no, I gave I gave I gave my ticket up the night before actually. To Sharpie, I give it him. Said you got you go and have a good day out, lad. I'll uh, I'll stay here. It was, it was I, a no, proper old school day out, actually, Raggy. You'd have, you'd, yeah, I'd yeah. have actually enjoyed it um, in Carlisle before, and it was well, very good. I'll tell you the way I was looking at it from the start of the week. I, I'd written it off the season anyway, and I thought so. Effectively, I'm going to Carlisle for a day on the piss. Well, guess what people in Carlisle do when they want a day on the piss? They go to Blackpool. So I thought, well, I'll just stay here where I am then. <laughs> That'll do. Uh, yeah, and then, listen, the the standard of the game didn't. I didn't miss much, did I? Well, I I actually had a free ticket. Um, I hope Joe's not listening to this. Um, my cousin can joke and go sent me his ticket. <laughs> You'll probably hear this. But I had a grassroots game in the morning. Just sort of dragged on a bit, and it it was a rush. And I thought, you know what, I can't be asked. It it meant me driving. Road work. He did ask us. He did ask us. I did, you know, Tim. I did, I did message Tim on the hope that he might have been driving. Oh, can I can jump in with you. But um, the response back was to my message, are you going? Was a picture of him and Nick on a train grinning like <laughs> Cheshire cats. That was the answer in pictorial form. Um, yeah, it was a bit of a nightmare as well, uh, traffic wise. I noticed quite a few people on Twitter, Mitch included, we got stuck with we people coming in late into the ground. Uh, I think most people are in. Um, it kind of got clear that the, the potential problem was the day before where there was a really bad crash. Um, I think not far from Penrith and the M6 was closed for most of the afternoon 
and overnight into the morning. So I spoke to Tim on Friday night and said, what do you want to do? Because at that point, we didn't know whether it was going to be open or not. And there was only two of us. And I thought the train was pretty expensive at the start. But when you break it down between Polton to Preston and Preston to Carlisle, it wasn't too bad. So I said, let's just jump on the train and we can have a few beers if nothing else. And, you know, like I say, it's always the football that, <laughs> that interrupts the day out, isn't it? So, yeah, we jumped on the train. But I think it seemed pretty full, didn't it, Tim, by the time? I mean, we were quite yeah. late getting in because we were in the pubs till quite late but it, it, it seemed pretty full by the uh, by the time kickoff came anyway what was the mood when the team sheet dropped Gribs, uh, Grim, Grimshaw husband back in his captain noticed uh, Pennington, Byers, Carey Dembele, Coulson, Beasley, Lavery Ector, Hamilton on the bench O'Donnell, Gabriel, Morgan Joseph, Virtue Casey and Quasity, 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 the main Quasity, yeah, it's a new signing. Um, Tim, come to you first. The once again inclusion of CJ Hamilton over Jordan Gabriel. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I, when I the first when I first saw the team sheet, I thought I'd have four of the subs starting was my first immediate thought, and then you obviously start looking at at, at what we have. Um, I mean, those those of a positive mindset will say Hamilton set up the goal against Fleetwood and that justified him um, starting on Saturday. I did think on Tuesday night, the second half against Fleetwood, he was completely anonymous. In fact, I, I thought he'd actually been substituted for a while. Uh, genuinely, I, I remember saying to somebody, God, I thought, I didn't realise Hamilton was still on the pitch. Um, and uh, so... I didn't think I didn't think he justified keeping the shirt, and I, and I am I am concerned. And listen, I've, I've I've got no particular gripe with Beasley, but Beasley now seems to have defaulted into our first choice striker, which um, concerns me. Um, you know, I know Joseph hasn't scored many goals, but he's for me he's an infinitely better player to have on the pitch, and the fact that he he doesn't make the starting eleven when we've got. Uh, very, you know, various forwards missing concerns me, and, and, and no doubt Critch will say, "Well, he's not scoring enough." But it's not all about scoring; it's about what you do in possession in that top third. And um, I rate him of, of what we've got available. I rate him as, as as the best footballer. So I don't like to see him on the subs bench, if I'm honest. And and you, I think you know what I think about Casey. I think Casey should be starting, and I'd have also. I think I think there's a um, Gabriel. I, I'd, have, I'd have started Gabriel and Joseph and Casey, and I think the jury would be out on whether Morgan should have started. Because to be fair, I think um, Byers has been doing quite well, and 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 the way that um, he and Carey have, have interacted in, in midfield with Dembele probably justifies not messing around with that. I think. Well, as always, I'm not. I wasn't overly impressed. I think is the. Is is what I take, you know. It took the short answer. Um, I just think it's the usual. Well, most certainly one favourite who seems to keep a shirt at any cost, and certain people seem to drop out of the team at drop of at the drop of the proverbial hat when they've actually when they've played played quite well. Raggy, over to you. Your thoughts on that? Oh, Casey's got a feel hard done by, hasn't he? He's getting binned off. Yeah, I, mean, I just looked at it and tried to work it. Well, don't, it's not it's not hard to work out the system because it never changes. So I just thought I'll tell you what I'll, I'll tell you what I thought after a little bit of looking at it. We've not got as good a team as I thought we had at the start of season. That's what I think. I've been seeing them all season. I thought at the start of the season we had a squad that was uh, okay, but I, I just think we're about where we are with that squad. We'll probably okay. finish eighth, and that'll be about right. I, I still think if we played four four two, we'd get we'd get a greater return on yeah. I don't Sam, disagree with Sam's that. investment in yeah. the squad, and I do think we'd be higher up in the league than we are because I think that this system's been our undoing away from home, undoubtedly. Um, you'd, get, you'd get a lot more out of Hamilton, Tim, because being his natural wing position, and then you'd have you'd have yeah. Gabriel at right back bombing on, you know, like overlapping. Them two had worked you know, quite you know, well, I think. I think he's doing you, you, CJ you, you, disservice. And you wouldn't be relying on Epiteta being your quarterback um, mm. 
spraying the ball about, which he can't do. Instead, he'd be playing yeah. as part of a, um, a centre back pairing. Which the best when we've seen the best of Marv, it's been when he's had somebody alongside him. So I think I think there's um, I think there's a there's, there's a listen. I'm not saying you never play this system because actually at home it's worked quite well, but away it's it's generally been shocking and and um, and you know yes we won on Saturday but it it was bar that that oh you know we we were quite dominant in the first thirty minutes or so but they are bottom of the league and they're bottom of the league for a reason and um, and we had the win behind us in the first half so and as Nick said it was it was having a fairly significant impact on the game so we were always likely to have more possession in that first half. With the elements in our favour, and and when they turned, so did our performances. So um, it was a lot more difficult in the second. Um, so I, I don't think it's a, a you know I, I don't think we played the way that all season away from home a way that would maximise returns. Um, but there we are with uh, with like a broken record, isn't it? And. I think I think most fans are now coming round to the reality that it, it, it is a flawed system. Um, there seems to be when you speak to people, there seems to be very little dissent from that view, um, and it's the lack of you know. Again, we, you know, we, I've listened to you, the podcasts I've missed while I've been away, and you know, we're talking about the lack of uh, in-game management and and the way that we don't adapt. And you know, we could have easily have come away on Saturday with a draw or even a loss because. Um, I wouldn't quite say we were hanging on, but most certainly it wasn't comfortable. And it should be comfortable. We should have beaten Carlisle relatively easily for me based on matching player against player. But we seem to be low in confidence. There aren't the strikers just aren't hitting the target. I mean, a, a lot. I think we had about 14 shots, but only two of them were on target, including the goal. Um, and that's, that's quite poor. Um, now, how much that, that's down to the system and how much of it's down to individual confidence i don't know but lavery's confidence is incredibly low it's a pity he didn't score that goal on tuesday night with a pen because i think he was desperate just to get a get a goal to help him get with a better mindset but as nick touched upon his blaze over the bar was uh you know it made me wince it was it was so poor because he just he did everything wrong um but yeah, two two shots on target out of fourteen is is worrying, and it and it's reflected in the fact that our goal our goal ratio, particularly over the last ten games, is 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 isn't good, is it? So is it less than one a game? I think over the last and they were eleven games, um, and that includes play, playing some team, you know, Fleetwood, Carlisle, both at the bottom. Putting it, keeping having having with our nick head on, I would say we're not conceding many goals either. So. In some respects, it the, the, you know defensively the system seems seems to be working, but it's when we're in possession, it just incredibly boring and to watch. Um, hence my and I think it's further down, but hence my thread title on the way home on the train. Me Nick, me Nick and uh, Tigger were were stood on the on the paddock, down in the seat, sorry, to the side, and uh, and a group of about five lads because the, the atmosphere it started off the atmosphere right, but it died away. Uh, in the second half, significantly because of the poor quality of the game, and there's about five lads singing "This is the best trip" as it was hailing in our faces, and as we were hanging on with them for a one nil win against Carlisle. So me and Tigger were chuckling, saying more like the worst trip, um, and that obviously then featured in the um, thread title I put up um, on the train home, uh, being a bit mischievous, I have to say, um, but it most certainly got the natives. Um, discussing things and it and um, and, and I, I think it turned into quite a good constructive thread about how systems, how what we think about the systems and what we think about the what our approach to games, which is at the end of the day what forums are all about, isn't it? Double century as well, I believe, Tim. Uh, yeah, it's still going. I mean, I'm I'm I'm, I'm heading towards the triple. I think. <laughs> that Brian Lara, and that's that's without <laughs> Phil, that Phil Ricky or Andy. Andy uh, Blood uh, taking over and doing doing a middle wicket for me. <laughs> uh, Nick, as I think Tim Tim just touched upon chances missed. Uh, mm. George Byers uh, once again 
waft his lines a couple of times in front of goal before he went injured. Um, it's been a bit of a pattern of him this season. He's he's a good player, but he's, he should mm. have at least three or four goals by now. Um, unmarked header, no, no yeah. pressure, and he's just headed it wide. So players like him really need to be contributing from the midfield area. We need goals from midfield. We do, yeah, and and particularly when, like Tim said, we've got strikers who are so so sort of short of confidence, Lavery, and and even Joseph as well. When he comes on, you can see that you know there's no lack of effort, no lack of trying, and um, you can see he's desperate to get a goal. But the longer it goes on, you think the more he's probably snatching at things, and it's just not happening. He's and he probably needs a run in the side, but you know he, he's not getting it. He he prefers. He prefers bees as he's um, one of his starting strikers and, and Lavery at the moment. And yeah, we I mean we've talked about goals from midfield for a long time, haven't we? But I don't think again we play a system particularly that lets players drive from midfield. It's not our, our creativity, it comes from Dembele, but it's just Dembele, isn't it? Or unless CJ manages to beat his man and get a cross in, it doesn't really come from Norburn when he's playing or, or Byers particularly. Morgan had a bit of a run, didn't he, where he was scoring a few before he got injured and, it, and it's good that he's back in and whilst Byers got injured, that's unfortunate. I suppose Morgan's got a few more minutes, which is no bad thing. But yeah, I think all round it's, you know, we, that's three one nil wins in a row, which is great. And you could, I think I said on the last pod, you could argue that at this stage of the season, it's not really about performances. It's about getting the three points and which we've done and it keeps us in with a chance, but there's a wider pattern to that and it, it goes back a lot further than the last three games. And again, I think I said on the last pod about, you know, previously when we've been in and around playoffs, you've been confident, not bothered who we play. We, we'll give anybody a game. It doesn't feel like that at the moment. It feels very, very stagnant and almost like, like Raggy said, I think we'll finish eighth and I think we probably will. And that's about probably where we deserve to be. You know, we, we, we may, well, we'll see at the end of tonight, won't we? We'll, we'll know one way or the other, whether we're, we're still in with a shout. And then if we are, it's a massive game on Saturday and maybe we keep it going. But there isn't, there isn't that buzz for me. You know, when you're seeing a decent side who score goals and we're not doing it at the moment. Um, it's maybe a sign that it's a pretty poor league that we're not, playing great but we're still in with a shout so you know you never know and you want to be positive but at the same time there is part of me that just thinks you know once it's done and if we don't make it you couldn't really argue that we should be in there over the course of those you know 30 odd games because I don't think we probably deserve to be Raggy would you would you agree with that um, I yeah <clears throat> I don't think it's been anyone's uh most exciting season they've ever witnessed. I'm not sure it's the best, the the worst trip we've ever been on, but it's uh, it's certainly it's certainly the most boring. <laughs> I'll put it that way. We've had worse times, but I'm not sure I've ever been so bored. Where it takes effort even to leave the Armfield Club and walk over to the ground sometimes, <laughs> but but we must do it. You've got to do it, haven't you? So um, it's these times that will make the uh, the good times even better when they come back. But yeah, if we finish eighth or seventh, that's probably where we deserve to finish. But if we finish sixth, if we somehow sneak in, well, we all know, we all know what happens next, don't we? So, uh, fuck your Wembley, t- Wembley hotels. <laughs> what Blackpool do? It's in there. It's in there. DNA. Yeah. Um, quite a good conversation piece. Um, for everyone on the stream and everyone in the studio. What's the most boring? season you can remember following Blackpool and who is the manager um well I, th- well, I, I think it's this sorry you think it's worse I was than just, I know there was, well yeah yeah but I just think it's it because I remember the Worthington uh era as well and yes it was shocking and uh but the 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 the, the club was a I don't know the, the whole thing was a ramshackle mess back then wasn't it but I've been describing it lately, like, look, Blackpill, we're, we're, we're the town, us, us as people, fans and that, we can handle up and down. We just can't handle this sat on the top. Well, I keep saying to people, we're, we're stuck on the top of the roller coaster. We can handle it up and down all day long. We deal well when we're down and we deal well when we're up. But when we're just stuck like this, that's no good to no one. No one knows what to do. And that's how I felt all season, just mundane, boring. 
and I can't. I, I've not been able to get properly up for it. No, no, get upset about it. But I don't like that. I either want to be fuming or over the moon. So, <laughs> Mister Sadler, sort it out for us. Get me fuming or or happy. One of the two. Oh, on on my on my thread, I actually said further down. I think somebody else um, jumped in and probably said that the most apt title would have been is you know the most disappointing season. And and I think there is a huge, most certainly, and this is the way I feel, a huge sense of disappointment that we haven't made the best of what we've got. And you know. Um, Whichever way we look at it, there's there's a there's a reasonable amount for me a reasonable amount of investment gone into that squad. Um, I'd be interested to see where we're at in due course in relation to how much we've spent compared with others on wages. But I bet we're top six for for wages, and so and we've never really broken in, have we? You know, we've we've got we're probably as close to the top six now as we've ever been. Um, but um, you just go back to the Fleetwood game. If, you know, every time we every time we've ever played Fleetwood at home, there's been an infinitely better atmosphere than there was last Tuesday night. And yet, in theory, at least on Tuesday night, we had something to play for. But I don't think anybody believes. I don't think anybody believes that we, we we're capable of going up, or that we are uh, well deserving of going up, as Raggy's spoken about. And you know, I, I was there on um, I was up in the hospitality actually on on Tuesday for a change. And I just looked around the ground and it was it was people were bored and people were on the phones and people weren't getting involved and getting behind the team. The team didn't look like they had any swagger about them. And again, we're playing second bottom of the league. And, we, and I'm looking at it and it was hard to tell sometimes who was the better. I know we've already discussed Fleetwood, so I don't want to spend too much time going back over it, but it was hard to tell. Who was who was the better side? And but for the issues over the wind on Saturday, which had a dramatic impact on on the game, I think it, to a certain degree, I think it was the same on Saturday. Yes, we did control it in the first half, but that was wind assisted, and then struggled in the second for the same reason. Carlisle struggled in the first, so I don't, I don't, we don't seem to impose ourselves in the way that we should do, unless sometimes we're playing teams at the top, and that makes it more frustrating because when you see us. Beat the likes of Bolton and and, and Peterborough and um, Portsmouth and Barnsley. You think, well, why can't you do that when you're playing? You know, no disrespect, but the teams at the bottom half of the table, and and that brings me back to my frustrations over the system and the fact that we never change it up. We never think, right, well, that doesn't work. You can tell after ten minutes of a Blackpool away game, can't you, what it's going to be like, and. Yeah. After ten minutes, you might as well rip up the, you know, the three five two or five three two, whichever you want to call it, and and do something different because it isn't going to change for the rest of the game. I don't, they must see that. Also, they got the red in an iPad or not. <laughs> also, the Boswells. Tim, um, <laughs> the fact that you know Oxford are scoring four or five goals every game at the moment, other teams are scoring loads of goals. That's worth a point now. They've, they've overcome yeah. our, our goal difference advantage. And that could be the, I think Mitch say it, I think he said last pod, we'll probably end up on the same points as the team that goes, that hits six and we'll get there on goal difference. Mm -hmm. Nick, over to you before you go anyway. Most boring season ever. Much um, it's probably up there. I think the thing for me is we've had, we've had seasons previous where it's been boring, but the kind of wasn't the expectation that I think there is this season. You, you knew where we were as a club, but it was, you know, you, you knew it probably wasn't going to be great, but you weren't expecting us to be in the top six, for example. I think this season with the, the budget, um, th there was an expectation that we'd be there and all right, we are there or thereabouts, but not that it was just going to be the, the, the style of football that it's been. And I think that's the thing for me. You, it doesn't feel like we're, just on the edge of the playoffs and we have a chance of getting in there, even though we are. Um, like Tim said, you, you you can see after 10 minutes, particularly in away games, you know what it's going to be like and that's been the story of the season. So it's a weird one to still be, almost to still be in with a shout and, and to feel like this, because like I say, normally you're absolutely buzzing and you're going into that game on Saturday and depending on how things go tonight, they go our way. 
you're like, right, we can do it, we can do it. But you don't feel like you're on the crest of a wave. You feel like there isn't any wave, if you know what I mean. It just feels very flat, which is weird when you're just outside the playoffs. But that, that, that that's the way it is. It's a, it's a bit of a strange one. But yeah, it's you can probably count on one hand the games where you've you've come out going, wow, I'm absolutely buzzing with that. And... And we fully deserved it and let's keep it going. It's been very stop start, consistently inconsistent all season. So but there's still hope. There's still hope. We're we're hanging on in there, aren't we? So on that on that positive note, I will I will love you and leave you. And Preston have just gone one down as well, so I may well, feel even there better. You go. Even better. And congratul- congratulations on getting your job, Nick. Cheers, thank you. Yes. Yeah, great news today. Appreciate well that. Right, I'll see you all soon. Thanks, Thanks guys. guys. May I escort that job, Oz, for the viewers? May I escort? <laughs> <That's right. laughs> well very favourable. <laughs> that won't last long. I'll be sacked after an hour. <laughs> see you later. Well, there's Cheers. nothing but a Blackpool scarf to <laughs> hide his dignity. Thought. On that bombshell. Ta-ra. <laughs> see you later, mate. Uh, uh, back, to, uh, back to the game. In fact, let's just get this. Get this up so if it's worked. Oh, we're all squashed there. We can see a bit of a a live action of what's going on in the uh, the Oxford oh, game. Oh, go on. Look at that. Mod, cause it's like walking football on a Wednesday night, this. <laughs> Is that how that goes? <laughs> it's exactly like it. <laughs> I believe you're playing no, here tomorrow. I am, yeah. Going for a walk. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he could jet no more. Yeah, <laughs> show him how it's done, Reggie. Show him how it's done. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You'll, I think you'll outpace one or two of them. Well, this, the game, you're, you're nearly old enough to play yourself, Reggie, aren't you? Oh, no, no, no. not fit enough. I might be. <laughs> Red Bull Tim, at half time, Tim. Um, Dembele uh, was absolutely on fire in the the Carlisle game. It'll be a massive loss when he when he leaves um, from slalom and runs to he he also nullified Carlisle's best chance in the first half. Um, last ditch sliding tackle from a oh mercurial midfielder. I don't even remember. Don't even pocket, remember that. pocket action man, isn't he? Oh yeah, it's absolutely. Um, he, he is, I mean, the we fact talk about he didn't play him at the, the season is. They didn't play him for God knows how long. Well, he didn't, think he didn't play Fleetwood, did he? Or um, um, yeah, Wickham at oh. home. Yeah, dropped him for Wickham at home. But I mean, we talk about it being an incredibly boring season. But probably, you know, the only highlight for me, other than a few of Rhodes' goals, is just watching him play because the way he caresses a ball and the way that he. He turns and the way he uses his, you know, relatively small body to his advantage to try and, you know, create space and uh, and, and and create scenarios for himself is fantastic. And we're good. We're going to miss it. We're good, we, I yeah. think it's one of those things when when he's not there, you, it's a little bit like when Wes left and when Bowler left. It's only when they're gone that you realise um, how exciting they are to watch on on a pitch and. Um, uh, the number of times I've seen him like win balls when he's on the floor, and and uh, and just the way it, it, it's almost it's very hard to describe the way he the way he controls the ball, but it's almost like it's you know we talk about the old cliche it's glued to his foot, but mm. he, he seems to be able to drag the ball around without it without losing control, you know, and and you know change direction of play. You know, he's not the finished article. You know, we've seen some wayward passing when he's created the space for himself but but he's still created the space for himself to put him in a position where he he can do that pass and if, if he was already if he was already at the point where all those passes were accurate then he wouldn't be with us would he um he, he would be far he, he would be playing far further up the leagues and i'm sure he'll be doing that next year and i'm sure we'll you know you'll see an incremental improvement in the way he distributes as a result, you know, of what he's done here and what he'll no doubt do do somewhere else. Um, so, yeah, we're going to miss the wee man, aren't we? Luckily, we've got Rob Apt coming back, who was named uh, 
Young Player of the Year in League Two. We'll come on, come on to him in a bit though. But um, Raggio, in my notes, I've just put do- total domination for the second half. But sec- uh, sorry, the first half. But second half, hanging on again against Carlisle, the team at the bottom. Yeah, well, I think Tim said before, like after about ten minutes of an away game. You might, you, you almost know what's going on, and it it just takes the, uh, it just took the same pattern again for me. A totally boring, nothing game in the end, and uh, well, I say nothing game. If we end up in the top six, it's great, isn't it? But, um, and it it was weird. I think was it Nick saying before? It's weird that we're close to the playoffs. Don't feel like it though, does it at all? So that second half just epitomised everything. I think of the whole season, just there. Yeah. It, it was just. I, 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 I must I'm, admit, I was I wasn't aware of the wind being so strong. Actually, oh, it was incredible. It was really bad. Yeah. So that 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 is always going to change a game, isn't it? I must admit, I wasn't aware it was that bad. So, I think we'd buy his head. Play, in, the, the, yeah, we, so, that's what you do. Is you, yeah, yeah. we've all played on common edge, haven't we? Yeah. What you do is you keep the ball on the floor. Yeah, of course you do. But you you, you you'd always choose to kick with the wind second half, wouldn't you? Well, we don't know whether we won the toss, though, do we? No, no, no. But what I'm saying is, if we were against the win, if if they had the win in the second half, that's how you would uh, you, you yeah. would have that as the team, wouldn't you? If you could pick. Um. So, and you're always going to be up against it when you've got the wind against you. So, we'll give them a bit of that. But that's not. It's not really an excuse because every other away game where we've been terrible, it's not always been windy, has it? It follows the same pattern, and it does just point to. Somewhere in that middle of that game, the system needs to change, and it, and it's it is very strange why he never ever once changes the system, not in play, or not for the next match. It, it's very strange that he must. I mean, if you want to give him his credit, he obviously believes in it himself, doesn't he? He's backed his he's backed his Blackpool career on that that uh, system, and he hasn't changed all season. So, but he did. He did it. He did it first time round, Raggy. He, he, he did. He changed four he, he changed, systems. Though, he? Yeah. But why? Why That's not this time? Is that it down to an to... assistant, or is yeah, it just well, down I... to the fact that he completely believes that that system's going to pay off in the end? I th- cast cast but... your mind back to his first ten games. That was that was as dire as it as what we're seeing at the moment when he first came, Critchley, and um, it was the introduction of Calderwood. That seem to make our systems more dynamic. All right, All right, Andy. Uh, we're just we're just slagging off Critch the system, so you're you're, you're nice it to segue onto this. It definitely coincided with Calderwood being in there, uh, and it's it's got to have had an effect. It's too obvious not to have. But why this time? Then why would he not take that experience this time? Even if he hasn't got an assistant that's telling him, why why would he not be experienced enough to think? Well, last time. We changed the system. He, he, he's just stuck to it completely, hasn't he? Never, remember, never seems to make a substitute. When, first, when we first started, we had uh, the sheriff and Marv playing together at the back oh two, didn't God. we? Which I, 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 I suggested they were the worst centre back pairing ever in Blackpool FC history. <laughs> 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 they were. It was like it was like calamity next to calamity. But as soon as you put Marv next to Keo. It, yeah. uh, it, it completely changed. <laughs> but yeah, and, 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 it, and I do sometimes think, I, I look at, the Critchley sees things in players like the Sheriff and like, um, and like we've seen with, uh, uh, with CJ uh, and Connolly um, and, and I would say arguably now Beasley that, the, the rest of us just don't, just don't see. And yeah. yes, he's the professional. He, yes, he's the professional. But you know, it's not like we're one of us are out on the on the limb, are we? Everybody seems to say see the same things, yeah. apart from him and his two assistants. Yeah, it's just I, I find it strange. But it, it, they've so they, so therefore they're either completely nuts or they've got total belief in that system and where it's going to take them in the end. Hmm. But it's it, was it. I think it's right. I only read it off someone else. But we've lost one nil nine times this season away from home. That that's not coincidence, is it? 
And that's not us nearly not losing. That is that is away teams working out that get if you get one up against Blackpool, or the home team as it would be, if if you get one up against Blackpool, they'll just keep the ball. And we'll probably win one nil. It, it seems obvious to me. And particularly not, teams not... teams of limited ability, I would say yeah, yeah, as course. well, where they where yeah, they, they, that's what it's they have to think we, we have to go come out with a game plan here to stop Blackpool. And when they do, yeah. it's very easy to do it. Where some of the yeah. better teams just play their own game, and yeah. that probably suits us a bit more. We can't we can't break down a team that sets up basically to defend and get one on the break. Um, yeah, and that's what well, we that, can't that, do. That requires, because... us, that requires us changing the system, doesn't it? But he just will, he just will not have that. Mm. So maybe do this. I don't know. Of failure. An admission of failure of his system. Well, he's too entrenched to change it. Maybe, but he did change it the first time round, and so what was the difference then? And Coldwater, maybe it was. The difference. Maybe it was, but he's you know he's had he's had a little bit probably bad experiences since, since then. But he's had well, he had a good experience that season. He's had a couple of bad spells at Villa and QPR, and he's come back with his system. Unless he's heavily reliant on data, and that's all saying that if you keep doing this, it's going to come right. I don't know. Who knows what these well, computers I, are doing? I always days. remember, Raggy, when you, you um, I forgot, was it, which game was it when you you actually had a word with the Boswells, didn't you? Um, yeah, after Fleetwood the game, away. Fleetwood, Fleetwood away. Fleetwood away was. And, and, yeah. and what I remember of that discussion, and it was quite interesting really, was they, how obsessed they seemed to be with possession. Yeah. And they kept talking, didn't they, about possession, possession, possession. The teams that have the most possession will win games. But it, yeah. it, it's it's just not true. Um, I forgot who it was on Saturday. Somebody on Saturday won convincingly with thirty percent possession. Uh, name escapes me. Which team it was now? I can't remember. It was yeah, Barnes. It's someone, it wasn't. It's it's some. No, you're right. It's someone said it's someone who won well as well. I can't. Uh... Yeah, and we beat Wigan at the beginning of the season well with about thirty five percent possession. And and it's yeah. what you do with it, not not. And but all all this yeah. all this again. I've said this so many times. All of our sixty percent possession, a significant part of it will be in the back third of our pitch. So, well, that's pointless possession because then we then we give yeah. it away when we pass it to CJ or whether we try and do a diagonal. So, it's got to be good possession, otherwise it's pointless. Uh, but they seemed obsessed with it, and if that's what he's getting in his ear, rather than change it up or or you know go go flat back four. Do this, do that. From somebody who's played eight, six, seven, eight hundred games of professional football, who actually knows yeah. what we're talking about. If he's getting that waffle, I heard you that being said to you. If, he's, if that's what's coming out, then I'm not surprised we are where we are because yeah. it's just it's, there's nobody challenging him. I can't, I can't believe that he listens to them. <laughs> so, I mean, but maybe he does, or maybe all three just think exactly the same thing anyway. Mm. So, so, that's so no one's helps, challenging anyone. They just don't believe that. Yeah. No, it's not. You, it's whatever, not. But I can't. Whatever you want. Having, having it, spoke um, to them, I can't believe that he takes orders from them or or, or takes bit major advice off them. But maybe he does. But yeah, it's not what you want. It's just a, a two 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 Phil Neils in it. Sat there. Two Bradley Walshes off bleeding. Uh, Mike Bassett. Yeah, go, go and get them balls. Go and get them balls, lads. <laughs> You do know we're going up, by the way, after all this. We're going to sneak in. Yeah, it'll happen, won't it? I, I don't mind. I hope it gets replayed next season and go, you, you bunch of numpties, what are you talking about? <laughs> we'll get memed. Uh, we'll take and it, will we? Yeah, take it. And Boswells will have the last laugh. Well, if if it comes, if that comes to light, John, this podcast in future has to have the intro music to bread. What used to be bread, doesn't it? That's it. Simple as that. We to take our medicine and that'll be it. <laughs> <laughs> all bow down to the Boswells. Yeah. No. I'm just trying to look oh. who that team was on Saturday, you know, who had less, less possession. Yeah, was... I'm sure they won I'm sure they won three or four nil or something at all. Yeah, it was. It was I remember seeing it on yeah. a, uh, either ABFTT or or X and uh yeah. and it, it just stood out because it just reinforced the point that 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 you know Possessions of possession has a limited value. Oh, here, here are. It, it was Oxford. Oh, 30, right, 30%, go, 30% possession at home to Peterborough and 1 5 0. Wow. Yeah. 
Wow, there you go. Yeah. 70 30 possession. Andy, well, give us your considered thoughts on the match on Saturday at Carlisle. I haven't got any. I went to sleep at half past three and I've only just woke up. The, uh, <laughs> well, Bolton are, lo- Bolton are losing anyway, if that makes you feel any better. Yeah, well, Preston are losing well, they, and Bolton they, are losing. They, they Preston are three nil the, down. Uh, they can, Bolton conceded just as they came on, so that was uh, that was quite nice. Anyway, Andy, yeah, we, Andy so. we both predicted one nil. If you re- refresh your menu from the last pod, we both predicted a Blackpool one nil win. Well, there you go. It's just like it's normal now, isn't it? We'll, we'll win one nil on Saturday as well. It was just it's just the norm now. I think the players have got used to it. As soon as a goal goes in, either way, they just uh, shut up shop, and that's it. Like they just not. I think you've 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 said it before. I've listened to a bit uh, as I was uh, coming back, but like we haven't got the quality that we probably thought we got, have we? So we uh, we just the quality's not there, um, and without Dembele, there's no excitement in this team at all, and it uh, it. It wor- it worries me going forward. To be honest, um, obviously we've got the excitement of Apta coming back, but um, and hopefully he'll, we play a a, a a system that suits him. But um, I don't see him playing where Dembele's played in this system. Um, like it just, I don't think it'll work. But I might be wrong. But I mean, uh, uh, this if, is, if this were... system's boring us to death. Andy, if 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 you were apt to, I'm not sure I'd be keen on coming back. <laughs> if this is the way we're playing football, I don't know. I mean, perhaps I'm being unduly negative there, but we're all assuming apt is going to come back and that he's going to lighten up our team next year. But uh, and, and I, I hope I hope he does. But I, you know, I can't. At the back of my mind, I'm thinking if I was him, do I want to be playing in a, in the system? Like the one, like what was like we've seen this year, and, and and for a manager who doesn't didn't rate him enough to keep him in January and play him, which and, is what. And, yeah, Andy, you know more about. Arguably, Apta, really. you think you've you've seen him more, haven't you, Andy? What what is his key position? Is it a right winger? You've he, seen him. He, you, play, you, he, you he you. plays wide on the right, but he right he right. plays he plays uh, for Tranmere, and then then but he he likes to play the ball through. He likes he likes to shoot and he. You know, he's he, realistically his goals and assists are pretty good. Um, so, like, if if we were an exciting football team, he would flourish. He would flourish in an exciting football team. Well, he's stuffed, and, then, isn't he? He's stuffed. And, and yeah, I mean, if you think about it, like with Wrexham, Stockport, Mansfield probably coming up, like next season. Then you've got probably some Yorkshire teams coming down out the. Um, out the championship, we've got a, a really good northern league next year. So if we get some excitement behind behind us, we take some really good away followings next year. We just we need to be excited to want to go. I mean, it's like it's a crime in it that that Raggy has a ticket for Saturday and, and don't want to go and do, don't feel the excitement. Same, same and Andy, wanting to same go. Me. I, had a, I had a ticket, didn't go. Yeah, same same thing. Don't want Same to waste thing. Time and money, and and it's 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 and I keep going on and on, and I, I sound like a broken record on these podcasts. But unless someone sorts out the excitement part of the job here, we we goosed because we as a town, we as a community, we as a football club thrive on excitement. The whole area thrives on excitement, and we've been at our best when we've been excited. And, and we've got bums off our off off the seats in in and like you know there's there's games where you've been to at Bloomfield Road where even the West are standing up like throw the tartan rugs away and the flasks are going up in the air and and it's like it, it, you know it, it, they're genuinely the ground's excited we've got to get back to something like that because we we can't continue like this. If if Critchley's in charge next season and this is Division One, 
and he's he doesn't come out and say, I'm going to change the system, I'm going to carry on as I was, right? We are 2,000 season ticket holders down the drain, me. Oh, that's what I think. And that's worries the hell out of me, not only for the club, but the the community around the club. The Armfield Club, the Lytham Road, the Bloomfield Club, the Bloomfield Pub, and, and that the, the chip shops, all these sort of things, right? That's We need all that to work. The town needs all that to work, right? So create some excitement around the football club. They have to do. We can't continue in this malaise that we're in. And and I'm saying all that, and we're still capable of, of getting into the playoffs at this point, but it doesn't feel exciting, does it? At the moment, the, the crowds uh, are at a historic high for what, you know, old Division Three stroke League One, um, yeah, you know, an average crowds. of 10,000 is, is the best we've ever done. And we need to be keeping hold of those, as you say, Andy. We don't, we most certainly don't want to contract. And if anything, we should be looking to um, uh, to, to build on that and to, yeah, and yeah, to hopefully get, you know, you can do that by letting a few more away fans in. Or you can do it by uh, building. Oh, don't do that. In your own fan base. Well, I know, I know, I know. I'm saying, Rabbit, there's two ways of doing it, isn't there? But but we want yeah, to do it where we're filling the stands. That's that's the point. We want to do both. Yeah. We want to do both, don't we? Long term, long term, our club should attract four thousand away fans every game in the championship. But we should also have sixteen thousand. They should. We should have a twenty thousand ground, and that should be the aim. Should be the long-term aim of the club, and I, I, I've, I've always yeah, wanted to know if it is, it. if it, if it is, whose job is it, and what they're doing about it. See, it won't happen overnight. I mean, instant success will do it. Spend fifty million pound on players and get us instant success up the out of this division and flying at the top of the championship, and that'll bring it. But it won't keep it. How do we build that over the years? Well, they're the things that people in the club should be looking at and it'll never, it'll never happen unless something changes it'll never, never happen unless someone's tasked with doing it who wants to do it and get on with it and um, well, we've designed a ground we've designed a ground that could never be full right because like where they put yeah, the, well, the, the, the away fans we can't fill the south stand that's we another ridiculous thing the, any, yeah, any other ground in the country could manage to organise that uh, why we don't? It, I don't know. We, well, I think the quite. I think somebody asked. Did someone say on that podcast group before about is the gate at the north end, north stand? Does the gate get opened? Does it let disabled people through That's or something right. like that? And someone put. Well, the club say it's down to the police, and the police say it's down to the club, and that's about that's about it throughout the whole club. No one, no one wants to make a decision. Everyone just says it's the other person. Until that's got to grips with, there's no reason at all why they couldn't have people. There's no reason at all why they couldn't give that away, that corner to away fans and have stewards or police down the middle of that separating that in the south. No reason whatsoever why they couldn't do that. Don't have to put them in this half of the east. They could. What's in that corner? Another eight hundred thousand seats. But easy, give three thousand away fans there. Easy. We seem to have we seem to have ground, seem to have ground safety concerns at our place that. That, that don't even seem to feature any other club. Don't happen no, anywhere really. else. Bur yeah. Burnley, particularly. Be, Burnley, yeah, Tim. Say Burnley. You can reach out Burnley. and touch the away fans, yeah. can't you? Other, others feel yeah. the same. Yeah. Still. No problem. I, yeah. I said it last home game. I, You know me, I only drink vodka and Red Bull when I go out, but I have to suffer that cat's piss in the ground just to keep me ticking over. So I get a pint of lager and it's like, ugh. So. I don't know why I've never thought of it before, but I just saw a bottle of lemonade there, Sprite. I thought, oh, do you know what? I might, I'll get a bottle of that and then put a little bit in this pint and I'll put another one in my next one. Anyway, obviously, it took the lid, didn't he? So I said, well, why can't I have the lid? I don't even want the drink yet. I want to put it in my pocket while I have this pint. No FA rules. I said, I've been to all the grounds around the country. No one's done that. Everyone gives me a bottle with the lid on. No FA rules. Well... If it, if, if it is FA rules, we're the only one abiding by them all. And if that's the case, well, we've got wet lettuces running the gaff and they need to sort it out. And if it's not Two FA rules, who's, who's telling them certainly, that if it's not FA rules? so Certainly two away grounds this year I've been given a bottle with the lid on. 
Yeah, yeah, cool. I've, I've had it a few times. A few times. Especially away gowns I buy my nephew a drink a few times. Bottles. Tops on. No problem. But there's your, there's the your answer, Raggy. I, I, Take I, your own lid in. Take your own lid in. I know, of course it is. But I mean, that, it's, what do you, I mean, just look, look where we've got to. Yeah. Having to set off on Saturday. Have I got my wallet? Have I got my phone, my keys, and my lid <laughs> to go to the football? I, I, I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to prejudge anything here, but um, and and I don't want to be searched. But I do take three lids in with me for different things. Oh. It was absolutely bizarre because when you take you. When I take, uh, my grand, first, when I take yeah. my grandson in, he'll just kick it over, right? Yeah. So I just, I, I take, I take the bottle tops in. It's absolutely stupid, isn't it? I have yeah. three. I have the same coat I go to most most football games, and yeah. and I put I put three bottle tops in me thing. Mate, mate, and, you'll be getting done. You'll be getting done for being a bottle dealer soon. You oh, get no, more yeah. in there. Start flogging him under the stand. Yeah. And the searches, the staff. searches. That's it. That's the other. That's the other big laugh, because every single game at Bloomfield oh, Road this season, God. where they've done the searches, I've just waited me, wait me time, just gone up the outside. It's like a little game with myself, like how childish, yeah. but like uh, not to get searched, and I've never been searched yet. No, not that I, I'm I causing any I must admit, but... In terms of the searches, I've every single time anyone's come to me, I just go no thanks and walk on, and no one does a thing. So. <laughs> That's Not about today, right. Thank you. Not today. Thank no you. thanks. Just, just, yeah, just polite. No thank you. Carry on. That's why we get. That's why we get flares in and everything. Smoke bombs. <laughs> Feeding the north stand. Well, what, what, what I've heard, what the two is. Um, that's a joke, four, by the way, in case the ground <laughs> safety officers watching. <laughs> about two. About from about two o'clock till half past two, they search everybody that goes in. And of course, they're all the people who are going in just to watch the warm ups and whatever. Yeah, they're not the type to be having <laughs> packing flares or anything, are they? And no. then, and then come out half two, quarter to three, the instruction is stop searching people because we've got to get them in the ground. So, yeah. like the, actual demo, the actual demographic of the people that they're searching um, is, is completely at odds with the, the risk profile of the people that yeah. they're doing it to. So, well, if, you wanted, it's in more if you wanted it to be. Yeah. If you wanted to be daft about it, they can't search kids, right? They can't search kids. So, like, if you wanted to put, for argument's sake, a smoke bomb in a kid's pocket and, and let him walk in with it, he's just going to walk in, and he they can no, search they, me all they like. They not that they, I've ever done it. Not n none of us here would, would bother they, doing that. But if, they don't search people properly anyway. You could get anything in that ground if you really wanted to. It's a waste. Yeah. Well, that's the pro that's the thing that just annoys people, isn't it? It's a complete utter waste of time. Yeah. All of it, yeah. and it, none I, of it I makes sense. So when, you, properly... when you get an answer. I saw an old fella being Sorry. properly searched, like in his late, like probably early seventies, being full body searched almost, going into the south at about quarter past two. I thought it's the most ridiculous yeah. thing I've ever seen. What are they yeah. doing? And that's the thing when it does when it starts to not make any sense and all. That's what that's what gets people's backs up, isn't it? So, Agreed. I hope they have a review of the uh, ground safety approach. Anyway. And the safe standing, the time, uh, my favourite the... terminology. The what? I was going to say, and safe standing, my favourite terminology. Safe standing. Most ridiculous phrase ever invented and ever put into football. Only only so, surpassed by the grassy nap that is available at Bloomfield Road. It's as, it's as balmy, right? Uh, this, this, uh, this happened years ago at the uh, Champions League final, right? They printed the tickets and they printed a brochure telling you all about the the ground and uh, at the area and where the fans should go on the same thing as a ticket. Looked like the same thing, right? And in Athens, they had to kick a fence down because there were so many fans outside. They had to kick a fence down to let get everyone in, right? So they 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 bloody people were just showing the brochure. And and just going in, it was just like balmy. It's just like football is is the most balmy sport going with with regard to you know all these things that go on. It's just like, but our own issues just our own issues are just born out of 
the uh, a bit of stupidity, I think. But also, we did we did have the 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 young kids in the north stand doing a oh, bit of. Anyway, never uh, mind that Lincoln City pen, Lincoln City penalty. Never mind, never mind oh, blaming the no, north. No. I'll put it on you. No blaming on you. No, no. Tau, tau standers. You're the ones that ran on and battered Fleetwood fans, not mm. us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Correct. Right, penalty, that, penalty, penalty. Where's penalty. that thing gone? That play by play thing. Where has it again? gone? So do we do we need to, do we want Lincoln to win? I take it. Do we? I think I think Lincoln winning gives us yes. more options, even though it puts them above us. I think it gives us more goal, goal, penalty, goal. Get in one yeah, nil Lincoln. That. Hey, there we go. Uh, hey, <laughs> it's like being on Jack Soccer Saturday. Huh? Look at that. I, mean, I, might, I might be wrong, but I just think it gives us more options of uh, of what what can. What can happen? And it's better if there's three teams in the mix, isn't it? Well, three teams we can than two. Defo, let's have a look at the other. Barnsley still won all. That's the favourite for me. I think he's Barnsley. I think that's the favourite for catching if it all goes to plan. Well, we've got we've got to win on Saturday to to be realistically involved anyway, haven't we? So with it being Barnsley, yeah. that that's a that's a proper six pointer, isn't it? So whilst we're only if they get beat behind, tonight. We're five behind, yeah. aren't we? If, if they draw, five we're going to be six. Tonight, yeah. We need and them the to most lose. Important, the, the most important stat of the night, lads, like, let's be totally honest about it, is if Lincoln win, we go back to eighth. Yeah, well, that's the thing. We're back where we belong. <laughs> <laughs> we found our level. There it is, as well, it I stands. Think as it important, stands, right? Yeah, the important <laughs> thing is... If Barnsley lose tonight and we beat them, we're two points behind going into the last game, but it means that they've got to win to make sure they get in the playoffs. Because if, if we win, mm. the draw for them is no good. It puts a lot of pressure on them on the, on the last day. Say that so, again, Maggie, sorry. Maggie, so say if, that again. So if, if they lose tonight, Barnsley, yeah, and then we beat them on Saturday, we're two points Three. behind going, in, going into... No, that's live, that. So the, if they lose, right. there'll be five right. points in it. Yeah. So we'd go into Saturday, five behind. If we beat them, two behind going into the last day, which means they've got to win because they'll be thinking we're going to go and win at Reading and a draw for them at home then is no good. Who they play in last half this game? Let's have a look. Uh, Northampton at home. Okay. Which is not the hardest game. It's not the best game you'd pick for them, but it just means the added pressure of a draw's no good. They've got to win. And when... So, when if they... If they lose tonight if, if for argument's sake if Portsmouth score then and we beat one nil there'd be level goal difference between us and Barnsley as well. Yeah well that's what we could have done with as well is Portsmouth going on a bit of a uh, three four get them done so three who, four who, who, Lincoln have got Cheltenham away on Saturday so you've got fancy them there haven't you? And they've got so, Portsmouth at home last game. Right Portsmouth uh, Portsmouth at home last game. But if Portsmouth have already won the league Yeah um, they might, they might be already on the beach, mightn't they? No, they, they, they might be, but I mean, they might not be. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're relying on a lot of teams to, to a lot of things away here, but uh, not least us winning two games. Mm. But if it's going to go our way, then uh, something like that's going to happen, isn't it? One nil. Mm. I just, I, I just, I just look at Oxford and think, well, they probably. You're probably going to get some uh, in them last two games, but you can see him. The pressure when you've got to win, the pressure is different than if a draw will do. So if Oxford get beat tonight, drawing on Saturday is no good for them. They've got to go out to try and win. Yeah, Exeter in good form at the moment. They've won three out of the last yeah. five. Two draws, they, unbeaten in five. Look at us at Walsall. Look at us at Scunthorpe. Yeah, he just yeah. Anything can go on, you know that. You, you see it in every division going off, can't Sorry, you? No one wants to win the championship, did he? Or the Premier Amazing League. Amazing results. Yeah, or the Premier League. League. Yeah. Gods are giving themselves a chance and all, aren't they? Well, they were winning, but Burton's no good for them, you see. No. And no. they play it's Burton. Four down, they play Burton. It's four down. It's four well, down, if, if Burton, had, if, if they 
They play Burton on Saturday, I think, well, which would have been a big game. But if it stays like that now, I think that's them knackered. No, they're down. They're down if they lose tonight. Are they? I thought they had a game. Down. I was thinking it was three down, but it's not. It's four, isn't it? Four go down. Well, I, thought, I thought they were only Valley. six. Oh, they all, uh, yeah. No. Only six off. Burton. Oh. Uh. Where's that league table? Burton are winning. At home to Cheltenham. Yeah, 1-0. Burton, Burton are winning. And they're... Yeah, Fleetwood are... Yeah, Fleetwood need to drawing. win. Yeah, Fleetwood needed to win and, and, and Burton lose. Yeah, but even if Fleetwood go on to win now, they've got a better goal difference, I think. So, all the same. No, so I, well, they've, got to, they've would, got to go and win, yeah. They've got to that go would give them six points behind and they play Burton on Saturday. So, anyway, get them down, get them down, get them down, get Bolton staying down, get them all down, get us up. <laughs> Do whatever, some corrupt refs or some bent betting patterns or something. That's what we want to go off now. If we did sneak into sixth, it would likely be us v Bolton. I mean, what a game. Yeah, we, what we a, should be what just a pair of games that would be. Tremendous, wouldn't it? Imagine, just imagine, Evo as well. <laughs> Ian Everts Tangerine ringing out can't, can't see a score in full this time <laughs> it'd do us a favour if we got in there you know, it, well it'd do us a favour bit playing the home leg first as well I'm with Bison so come back to reality we haven't got a cat and else chance yeah yeah well, of course but you know no, it'd be boring yeah. if we just gave up wouldn't it yeah yeah I mean, the fact that I gave my Carlisle ticket away tells you all you need to know about what I, what I really think. But why we're here now and the results are still there. You know, there's still a chance. There's still a chance. It is incredible by the amount of the number of away games we've lost that we are even in yeah. contention, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. just, it's bonkers. Absolutely bonkers. But just... Um, it's unlikely, Just but not up. impossible out there, Seth. That's right. Unlikely, oh. but not impossible. We just need Portsmouth. Just Portsmouth. Come on. Barnsley will have some pressure on them if they get beat tonight. If you look at that. Not on a good not on a good form either, are they? No. Look at that. Some one nils knocking around, isn't there? I bet Critchley's sitting at home just having a smug little face to himself. So, so assuming Half the league is winning one nil. So, assuming Barnsley um, lose, which means they'll be on seventy five, and then we yeah. play them and we go up to seventy three. Yeah. If if they then draw and we win, how does our goal difference look against them? I think there's only about three in it. Or three in it. Three tonight. in it at the moment. Yeah. Three in it. Yeah, so obviously the fact we beat them at home is going to they would lose at least one by losing tonight, which would make it two. And then there yeah. must be at least a turnaround of two if we beat them, mustn't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we be leveling that, it, we'd be leveling that to in that well, scenario. It, even if they draw just tonight, like us to win us beat them one nil anyway. If they draw yeah, tonight, yeah. then we beat them. We'll be three points behind them. Very close goal difference going into the last game, but then a draw does them, you know what I mean? We want them to mm. We want them to feel like they have to win on that last day. But as... Uh, well, I think that right Rock now. If it goes into the last game of the season and we've got a chance, we've got a win to give ourselves a chance, well, then you'd take it right now, wouldn't you? I hate to say it. Are you, are you then going to Reading? Reading? Stephen Roberts. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Guaranteed. There's a lot Guaranteed. There's a lot already booked to stay in Reading over, overnight. Um might not need to. The game yet, might take will, till I ten o'clock to I get will finished. Be one of them. Well, that's more the point. <laughs> there's a, there's a lot of shenanigans a, going on down right, there. If, so, if there's a chance, you've got to go. You've got. You've to got go, to go. Oh, 100 percent. But uh, I think you'll, you might see something similar to our game against Huddersfield well, at home when you watch Reading on the well, last just, game just, of the season. Just, just on that, Raggy. Uh, um, we had a, a, a meeting with Reading, must be about three weeks ago now, BST, because obviously at the time they were they uh, they were obviously extremely concerned about where things were going. Yeah. And we actually asked them the question, 
in the meeting? Because they were basically picking our brains. Is there anything that we're not doing that we could be doing that you think might work? And we actually asked them, look, you know, do you think there'll be an in-game protest the last game of the season? And, and we had two or three of them on from really senior people from the various protest groups and, and supporters trust. And they were adamant not. They said, we've done in-game and there's no appetite to do it again. Uh, and of course, since the, the owner has accepted an, an offer in principle, haven't they? So my gut reaction is there won't be any attempt to disrupt that game. Um, well, from... But, from, that, from... And, you know, they, they, were, they were adamant. I was surprised that it was so adamant that they wouldn't do anything. Yeah, well, that might be... Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe, let's say let's say the more, more unruly people that we know mm. uh, have suggested that it was definitely going on. Mm. So... We shall see, but if they have been bought or they're getting bought, it will change their minds. Yeah. Well, couldn't Reading just really heavily steward the game, if that's the case? Like, we're at well, all, around, all, all around the ground, stop everyone going. You're not going to stop anyone going on if they want to go on, are you? They wouldn't have stopped us going on that pitch. No problem. It's only Reading, though. But we'll it? see. It's anyway, listen, it all, it, all, it all adds to the fun and the drama, doesn't it? Who are we to, who are we to question people running on pitchy stuff in football matches in belief that it's helping their football club? It would all make for yeah. great drama. We could then moan to the FA and the EFL. What's happening with this game? Three points would have got us in the playoffs. Well, I don't, I don't think, think it, if, if there's anything turns on it, I don't think that they would allow a, situ a situation like they, they left our game against... Huddersfield, I don't think they'd do that if there was something to play for. I think they'd replay the game, wouldn't they? Yeah, well, they'd have to do, wouldn't part they? Of the game but, 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 yeah. but I say, it, but it just it make, it's just that adds a little bit more fun to it, doesn't it? Mm. We like a bit of mayhem, don't we? We don't like stuck on the top of the roller coaster. We like up or down. <laughs> <laughs> bit of excitement. At least we're bit not mid table excitement. with nothing. At least we're not mid table with nothing to play for. So. Exactly. I suppose that is. It's not the most boring to, uh, season ever. We can, we'll go off the table. No. I mean, that. look at that. We've had to dip our toe into the political world and get get the hustings at the armfield and everything, haven't we? BBC down. Had to keep ourselves going. Cole's on Got his way, isn't he? Cole's Cheltenham's on his way down. Cole. Cole's on his way down. Tell everyone about the hustings, Raggy, for those who uh, don't know about well, it's it. Well, it, it's next. I know you put earlier on for tomorrow. It's not tomorrow. It's next Thursday. Sorry. Tomorrow is uh, the BBC are coming tomorrow at seven o'clock, uh, doing a little piece in there. And they, they'd like people to go down. They want to talk to local people about local issues and uh, in Blackpool South. So hopefully we're getting a few people down there and they can have the say. But next week is the hustings and... The hustings, if you don't know what the word is, is basically just a question time of the candidates that were running for Blackpool South. We arranged it at the Armfield and invited them all, and um, and they're all coming. So get down there, seven o'clock it'll start. Andy Higgins is uh, chairing, chairing it. What's he called now? Hosting it, comparing it, whatever you want to call it. Packs and uh, yeah, and everyone will be. Uh, Invited to ask questions to all the candidates about what they what they plan to do for the uh, the great area of Blackpool South. So get down. I remember, I, I remember going to see Andy when he stood in 2015. It was actually really interesting. The um, uh, hearing hearing everybody what they've got to say and the usual little petty jibes that the um, Labour and Conservative uh, prospective candidates tend to have for each other. So yeah, I, I'm going to make an effort for that. I think it's um, it's quite entertaining, if nothing else. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I say it when they when they say they're going to pave the streets with gold. Well, how are you going to do it, Mister Webb? Exactly. When is it? A week on Thursday, you say, Raggy? Yeah, a week yeah. on Thursday. Yeah, might be a laugh. Colin said he's going to. Colin said he was going to come to the Armfield to speak to the BBC. Uh, and his his way of helping the poor people of uh, the South Shore is to get rid of Critchley. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> improve the mood. <laughs> That's what he said. I, I well, it's important to 
Sorry, go on. I was going to say I was on the train back from Carl Colin and he was he was he was making a, uh, a play for a place on the podcast team, John. So no, it does it does it to me warned. every week, and I say, get on it then, get on it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Andy? I'll let you decide. Hey. Eh? I'll I'll let um, you decide. What do you think? I I I, I said we were going to give a twelve month behavioural order before he can come on. <laughs> <laughs> when his asbo finishes, <laughs> he's a great lad, Cole, as we all know. Get and him on. Got to uh, get him on for a guest spot. Get him on for a ten uh, minute guest spot one time. He he has got he 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 he's invested his arts invested into our club, isn't it? And uh, uh, and he'd do anything but he he, he just feels how uh, how many fans do feel that he's just bored and he just doesn't feel as though um he doesn't feel as though Critchley is the right man to take us forward he feels as though he's 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 going against that and and driving people away that's how he feels um but he just he not frightened to let people know, is he? He's not going to bite his tongue, Colm. One, one other piece of news. Um, 22 years ago to the day since we lost legendary manager. Billy Air, sir, 22 years, eh? Um, I noticed the, the club republished the, uh, the playoff final against Scunthorpe and with the penalties. We've got it, we've got it here. We just watched this for three minutes. It was a good little trip down down memory lane. Try and get it full screen. There we go. Let's, let's have a watch of this. The old Wembley as well. Yeah. Yeah. Proper Wembley. Can you hear the audio? No, not no. at the moment. No, hang on. Oh, Basley have scored. Who have? Barnsley. Well, Frankie. Barnsley. Oh. Uh. Not good. No. Right, I should sort the audio on this now. Hopefully by the time we've watched this little clip, um, they'll be back in the game. Barnsley have one. Yeah, the audio now, yeah. 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 The two managers. <laughs> good friends. <laughs> been a well-fought match and for the second successive season the fourth division playoff final will be determined <coughs> by a penalty shootout we we're all behind that goal weren't we i was anyway i know that it's like the young level walk away and remember that that's the blackpool yeah. band singing that one in the playoff one nil <coughs> Mitchy Cook. Mitchy Cook. <laughs> Where's Mitch? He can't watch as London scores. He's never ever scored a league goal. Is it Graham Alexander that missed it? Yeah, I was just right. gonna say I was just gonna say who it is, yeah. And he was one of the best penalty takers ever, wasn't he? Yeah. It was just Groves. Groves. <sighs> he scored some gold for us. Look at Bamba there. He's feigning injuries, you have to take one. <laughs> Into the roof. The man who is here. He's bottoms on as well. Matt, Matt yeah. Elliott, that. Andy Garner. Who had the Garner? Who had the Garner? Who had the Garner? Who had the Garner? Have you ever seen two refs in there like there is there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Must be the other linesman, mustn't it? Well, it is, but why, I've never seen them in, in the area yeah. like that together. What a, what a goalkeeper he was. That made Graham Alexander never miss a pen ever again. Yeah. He scored him. As hit the stanchion. Yeah. I thought he'd missed it at first. Jason White missed, misses the skunk up. Crucial pen. To Division Three. It's all on this penalty kick. 
and this man, Jason White. And he's missed it, and Blackpool have done it. The team who lost on penalties 12 months ago are going back to Division 3 after two years. Was it Billy Ayres said he asked whether it was his best moment in football? Two substitutes. Yes. And he no, said, I've never heard it football. It's the best moment in my life. life. Yeah, yeah. And he also said, I've never had a worse moment in my life, never mind football, when we missed. Mm. But this day belongs to Blackpool, and you can see what it um, means. There he is, the great man. Congratulations in full kit. From the manager. And well deserved, because it was a terrific save that he made. And Billy Air <laughs> and his fans congratulate each other. Fantastic. What a man. So the, the crappiest playoff trophy ever. Who <laughs> takes the silverware, especially commission trophy, awarded to the playoff. There's another KO lookalike. Look, top right. Oh, hi. <laughs> oh, what a great man he was. Uh, Billy. How does that moment, that scum, when that Jason White hit that penalty over, how does that compare to the other times you went up? I think for me that the only comparison, you know, the comparison of the the utter relation was similar to when we got to the Premier League. I remember being absolutely buzzing because of what happened the year before. I mean, imagine if we'd have lost that again on pen. I couldn't. I couldn't believe it was going to penalties again, and because um, the Friday night absolutely destroyed me. I was when we when we lost that game because I think everybody thought we were going to beat Torquay, didn't they? And um, and Bamba, who was the golden boy when it came to scoring goals, you just wouldn't even contemplate him missing. But um, yeah. It, it, it was a tough one to take and, and, and rather poetic that we were able to do it by the same route the second time round. But it didn't feel like that at the time. I just remember being absolutely cacking myself when those penalties mm. were going in. Because it's, 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 it's the fourth one's the first one that's missed for them, isn't it? So the first seven penalties were scored. Um, and you won, you know, you reach that point where you make a mistake and that you're basically more often than not goosed, aren't you? And and thankfully it was them knows. But what a great save for Makalagi to because he did you know I think if he just got a touch on it, they'd probably gone in. He had to hold it, didn't he? Yeah. And as Tony says, what a great shirt it was as well, that Inenko shirt. It was one one of the ones I've got I like the most that kit. Made by Gola. Yeah, I like, that. I like that from Steve Roberts and our coach. We had a flag in the back window with "We're too sexy for Division Three on it. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, Stephen, it did. That's, that started our amazing playoff run. That's right. Didn't start too good though, did it? So our um, we're, we're now Tony hanging our hat on Oxford, aren't we? Yeah, let's. Uh... Let's Portsmouth have a right goal here. I mean, they shot... they equalised at Burton. But he Portsmouth. Oh, you can't believe it, can you? Convinced they'd just batter them tonight, wouldn't it? Win the league in front of their own fans. It's always the, it's always the case, though, isn't it? You know, you, the, you, your fans turn up with expectation and... Mm. They let down because, like, they would they'd have won it tonight, wouldn't they? As well, there's well, yeah. there's still probably 30 minutes left, including stoppages, isn't there? Yeah, 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 there's plenty of time. Let's look at the momentum graph, that's always telling. Man Mansfield needed to win if they were going to go up uh, from two league two, they're so, two nil up, they're two nil up. So it'll be Stockport, Wrexham, and Mansfield coming up plus one, which could be. Could be Barrow. crew, say. Could be Barrow, could be crew. Yeah. 
It's about time we had a bit more equilibrium in relation to the sort north south divide. We've had so many uh, yeah. um, long away trips this year, haven't we? Mm. Oh, it's it's right. What Andy was saying that more northern clubs, and if we have a if we have a good season, a good exciting start, and everyone's at it, we'll take we'll 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 have a right good do, won't we? We'll take thousands to these places. Mm. We'll start oh. losing Reading, though, won't we? You know, if 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 oh, we're in we the position, if if we're in the position, you know, during the season that like let's say Bolton have been in, where top three pretty much all year. Right, then, Crow, we would, we would. I mean, that would maximise to what we what we can take, really, apart from an odd, um, an odd anomaly like the Premier League when we we had fans hangers on, didn't we? I think this is going to be a Come pretty on, boring Paul. stream. It's going to be a pretty boring stream. Just us sat here looking at this, isn't it? So yeah. yeah. We'll call it let, a day me go, let, let me go away and cry on me own that the season's <laughs> over. <laughs> so we've got. If Oxford Honestly. have lost tonight, you know they they they've still got to go out and and get, you know, probably a couple of wins or a win in a draw. Well, a couple of win in a draw won't be no good if Lincoln win their game. So yeah, one, of them, one, of them's Chel- one of them, one of them, one of them, Cheltenham, isn't it? Yeah, and Cheltenham have just equalised at Burton, so they're still giving themselves a fighting chance. And Stevenage, Stevenage, sorry. Stevenage and Exeter, sorry, Oxford have got, haven't they? Well, can't see you Oxford never know. Stevenage. You never know in this time of year, I know. But look, if we don't get in the playoffs, we don't deserve to, let's be fair. I agree, Andy. We, we don't deserve to. And, and like, you know... It would feel a lot more hollow getting to the playoffs this time than it has in the past where we've come up um, into sixth right at the last minute where there's been a lot of excitement around it. There's not that excitement running through this time, is there? And it, no, like no. that's not just us four. That's like Everyone. throughout the throughout a lot of the fan base. you probably got 30% of the fan base who are probably excited, right? And the other 70%. Are, are like just malaise about it all, you know. So it's not, uh, it's not, it wouldn't be uh, um, the worst thing in the world. And I think we do need a squad reshuffle. Um, well, my opinion is we need a manager reshuffle as well. But there you go. And Bolton have just equalised as well. Oh, definitely going now. Then it's getting worse. Results are getting yeah, worse. Yeah. <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah, let's <laughs> let's call it a day, gents. Um, play the outro music. Yeah, well, see see where we are at the end of the day. Anyway, um, Barnsley. You can only we'll, look we'll, after we'll your own for. results, can't That's you? Right, Andy. Yeah, yeah. So, well, but we'll leave it there. So, yeah. Thanks for thanks for coming on, gents. Good laugh as always. Um, thanks to everyone who's joined us in the stream. Um, Barnsley at home. Who knows what's going to happen? Um, this is Blackpool. The Blackpool way, I guess. So, um, yeah, all my specialists. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for downloading. If you're listening on the audio pod, I should even bother saying up the pool. Oh, yeah, come on, the pump. Yeah, come, come on, on the Pompey. Play up, Pompey. Come on, Pompey. <laughs> Dear me. Go on, Pompey. Pompey, play up. Play up, Pompey. Pompey, play up. <laughs> 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 <laughs>